In this quick video, I will show you how to install Pinterest tag with Google Tag Manager. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Tag Manager, consider subscribing to this channel. When it comes to paid advertising, it is crucial to track the success of your campaigns and build audiences. That's where things like tracking pixels and tags become very useful. Google Ads offers that, Facebook does that as well. And Pinterest is no exception. If you want to build a retargeting audience, you can do that with Pinterest. And today I will show you that essential setup. Also, at the end of this video, I will tell you what to do next if you want to track conversions with Pinterest pixel. All right, so let's take a look. In this video, I presume that you already have a Pinterest ads account, but if you haven't done that yet, then you should go to ads.pinterest.com and sign up and follow all the steps. When you do that, then you will see something like this and in the top menu, you should select conversions. When you run ads, it is very important that you measure the success of these campaigns. What kind of interactions do they drive? Do they drive leads, purchases, or something else? Which campaigns are performing better? And that kind of measurement is possible if you install tracking pixels. When it comes to Pinterest, they also offer a Pinterest tag. So when you go to ads and conversions, you might see something like this. This notification will tell you that no data was received by the Pinterest. So if you want to start sending some data, you should scroll down and choose the option add code to the website. Personally, I don't use the use an integration partner where you can then select Google Tag Manager because then it will add tag to your container and it will immediately publish your Google Tag Manager container. So if you have already some unpublished changes, they will go live as well. And I just don't like that. So that is why I recommend choosing the add code to website option. You can click it right here and you will see a tag ID right here. This is the thing that we are going to use in our Google Tag Manager setup. By the way, if you are completely new to Google Tag Manager, I have a tutorial on how to get started with it and you will find a link to it below the video. So when you see this pop up, you should double click on the tag ID and copy it. Then go to Google Tag Manager and you can click either here on new tag or go to tags and then click new right here. Then click tag configuration and here you will see a lot of tag templates that you can use. Click on the search icon and enter Pinterest. Here is the tag, you can click on it and then you have to paste the tag ID right here. If you don't care about the conversion tracking or you don't want to send some additional events to Pinterest, then it is enough to just paste the ID right here. But if you plan to send some additional events in the future, then it makes sense to insert this ID, not just as a plain text, but as a variable, because in the future you will need to create additional Pinterest tags and they will all be using that variable that contains the tag ID right here. That is why we will click this button instead and we will create a new variable and you can do that by clicking this plus icon and here click anywhere on the variable configuration section or click on this pencil and then select constant. Then paste that tag ID and then you can enter something like Pinterest tag ID and then what kind of ID is that? Save. So now this variable is inserted right here and whenever this tag will be fired, Google Tag Manager will take the ID stored in this variable and then Pinterest Pixel will know to which exact ad account to send that data. You can leave all the other settings as they are. By the way, I have a blog post that explains more details about Pinterest Pixel. So if you want to learn more, I will post a link to it below the video. And then in the triggering section, click anywhere and fire this tag on all pages. I chose this trigger for demonstration purposes, but if you are dealing with things like European traffic where general data protection regulation is active, so then you should fire this tag only when the consent is given. Now that is a topic for another lesson. And if you want to learn more about how to configure your tags to respect users privacy preferences, then take a look at my Google Tag Manager course for beginners. I will post a link to that course below the video. Anyway, let's go back to this example. So we are going to fire this tag on all pages. And let's name this tag. I will call it Pinterest base code. So base code means that this is the base, the standard tracking code that will be activated on all pages. So click save. Oh, I forgot to select this option. So in this case, if you want to learn more about enhanced match, take a look at my blog post below the video. But right now I will select that I don't want to use that and click save. Now let's test whether this is working properly. Click the preview button in the top right corner of the Google Tag Manager interface. Then you will be asked to enter the URL where you want to test this pixel. So let's say that this is a URL and click connect. Here you will see that a tag has fired, but that does not mean that everything was sent properly. 
we need to test some additional things. And one of the ways how we can do that is with a Chrome plugin, which is called Pinterest Tag Helper. I will post a link to this extension below the video. So once you click that link, you will install the extension and it will look something like this. Here it is, Pinterest Tag Helper. I can pin it and you can see it right here. So now if I refresh the page, you will see that its color turned from gray to red. So it means that the helper found the request that was sent from your website to Pinterest. You can click it and then you can see what was the URL of the page from which this request was sent. Then you can go back to the interface of Pinterest ads. You can click continue, you can click install it, but that doesn't matter actually, and then click done. Then within the 10 minutes, you can refresh the page and you will start seeing something. So for example, here we see the tag name, we see the ID. This is the same ID that we used in our base code right here. Now, obviously you also want to track page views. So every time a visitor lands on your website, you want to track that page view. That is why it is enough to open your base code tag and switch from the base code to page visit. And every other time when you implement Pinterest tag, you can just start right away with the page visit. I just wanted to show you the initial process of, you know, how things work under the hood. So when you choose the page visit, then you can click save. Actually, you could rename the tag as well. So let me just quickly do that. And then let's refresh the preview mode once again. And you can do that by clicking that preview button right here. And once that happens, let's take a look what we see in the tag helper on our website. So now I see not one, but two events. And one of them was initialized event. And the other one is the page visit. So the page tag handled both events properly. Now let's go back to the Pinterest interface. Let's refresh it. And here you will see that now we have two init events. So these are the initialization events. And also we have one page visit event. If you don't see the events appearing here right away, wait a couple of more minutes and then try refreshing the page once again. So once you make sure that the Pinterest tag was implemented properly, you can now submit your container changes and these changes will go live. So this means that all of your website visitors will be tracked with the Pinterest tag. Click submit and enter some version name that would describe what we have just done here. So Pinterest tag installed is a good option. Then click publish. Now you might be wondering what can you already do with that data? So one of the examples could be that you could go to ads, audiences, and then you can build some additional audiences. For example, if you want to show ads to a particular group of your visitors, you can do that. For example, you can click create audience and then you can enter some additional information about your audience. So let's say that we want to show ads for those who have visited pages of men's shoes. Then we select the source. So in this case, Pinterest tag is the source. We select that tag and then let's click the optional filters and say that we want to include only those people who visited the destination URL that contains, let's say, shoes men, if that is the actual part of the URL, and then click create. And then if you have enough data and you have waited for a while, then this audience will be ready for you to retarget. Obviously, keep in mind that more and more browsers are blocking things like third party cookies. That is why, you know, you won't be able to reach all of your visitors, only those that have enabled third party cookies. And as the time goes by, the number of these visitors will decline. But if you're watching this video, when at least a portion of your visitors still accept third party cookies, then you can try to use Pinterest ads and their remarketing audiences. And that is how you can install Pinterest tag with Google Tag Manager. Your next step should be conversion tracking. It will allow you to see which campaigns are driving better results. Next week, I will publish a tutorial on how to do that. And if you're already watching this video in the future, that means that the new tutorial is also live and you can find the link to it below this video. Or maybe you can click somewhere right here. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.